Good evening. Welcome to the City Council meeting for Monday, March 23rd. If you will please stand and join Councilman Miller, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Deaton. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Sloan. Here. Council Member Miller. Here. Council Member Masalavit. Here. Council Member Verapapa. Here. This is the time for oral communications, time that the members of the public may address the council regarding any items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. Mayor, if I could. If we could just back up for a minute and go through the approval of the agenda and the presentations first, please. It's not on my paper. Oh, you know what it is. I'm in the special session. I'm sorry. Hold on. We had two council meetings today. We're on number two. My mistake. Okay, now, this actually is the time for the approval of the agenda and the waiver of full reading of resolutions and ordinances. By motion of the City Council, this is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda and or rearrange the order of the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to rearrange the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we will uh, leave the agenda as is. Do I need a vote on that? So move. Second. Please vote. Okay, that's 5-0 to leave the agenda as is. Okay, and now we will move on to our presentations and recognitions. Our first presentation tonight is on Tsunami Awareness Week. Uh, the Seal Beach City Council formally declares this week, the week of March 22nd through 28th, National Tsunami Preparedness Week. And we publicly acknowledge the importance of preparing for national disasters, natural disasters. The City of Seal Beach is a tsunami-ready community. This is a national certification issued by the National or Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Weather Service. And to be designated a tsunami-ready community, there are a variety of criteria that must be met, including establishing a 24-hour warning point and emergency operations center, having more than one way to receive tsunami warnings and alert the public, promoting public readiness, through community education, and developing a formal tsunami plan. And the Seal, City of Seal Beach, in cooperation with the State of California, Office of Emergency Services, will be taking an active role in promoting public education and awareness about the tsunami preparedness. Tonight, we have Corporal Mike Ezro here to accept this proclamation. It is good to know that our city is prepared, not just in case of tsunamis, but for all natural disasters. So I thank you all very much. All right, the next uh, presentation is going to be the 2015 Run Seal Beach Resident Winners, William Ayers Fastest Resident Trophy. Mark Lepesco is here from the Run Seal Beach organization uh, to present the winners. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mark Lopesco, along with Bill Ayers. Well, 5,000 participants on Saturday, representing 22 states and three countries. And tonight we're here to honor the four 
fastest Seal Beach residents. As you know, the William T. Ayers Award hangs in perpetual on the wall right outside the Recreation Office, and every year for the past five years we honor the four fastest residents. The two females in the 5K and 10K and the two males in the 10K. So tonight Bill Ayers is here and we're going to honor the four new inductees. The great thing about tonight is we have two new inductees and two repeats. So on the 5K, our second youngest inductee, she was second in her age group. She had a 7-19 pace over the 3.1 miles. 13-year-old Victoria Hansen. A brand new resident to Seal Beach. He was eighth in his age division. He averaged six-minute miles. And as I said, he's a very new resident, Bobby Tilchy. And he's out of town tonight, but his wife, Joni, is going to come up. In the 10K, this is a great honor because as a professional athlete, I know what it's like to try and repeat your award each year. But in doing it four out of the past five years, Lorenzo Tyner just gets better and better. As I said, this is his fourth time of being an inductee on the William T. Ayers Award. He was second overall in the 10K. In other words, he hit the finishing mat right just just a few seconds behind the overall winner. And he was first in his age division, and he averaged a 6.15 for 10 kilometers, which is 6.2 miles. Lorenzo, congratulations. And this woman, wow, you can't say enough about her. She aged just like a fine wine. She just gets better and faster. She had another – last year we congratulated her for having a personal best in this race. Well, this year she even beat that time. For her fifth consecutive inductee onto the William Ayers plaque, she was – she tied first overall. Let me find my notes here. What was your pace, Kathleen? 6.29 minute miles. For the, over the 6.1 mi miles, Kathleen Fair. I'd like to say that each of our uh, inductees received. Wait, get Bill in here, please. Yes, I know. Thank you. <laughs> each of our inductees received a gift certificate, gift certificate to uh, O'Malley's. And a Centennial, Seal Beach Centennial bag. And their name, as I said, is engraved on our plaque, which hangs outside the recreation office. Did you get a photograph? Great. Congratulations to Nolan. Thank you. Well done. The comments that we've received back from our participants and spectators and everything, this was our best race yet. And, uh, Jill, thank you very much to your management team. Um, Sean, uh, Public Works did a phenomenal job. The streets, the parks, everything was just perfect. Uh, CJ number one, your team under the leadership of Corporal Ezra, if he's still here. Uh, Sergeants Don Shack and uh, Scott just did a phenomenal job. The, uh, the course was very safe. Um, you can't say enough about your team. And again, Public Works, too. Thank you. Uh, 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 Lieutenant Pierce, thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate the lifeguards, what they do for us all the time. I'd like to thank all the volunteers. We had over 500 on the course on Saturday. Uh, a big thank you to Seth Eaker. 
And then, of course, the love of my life, the woman who puts about eight months a year into this race, and there wouldn't be a race without her, Elizabeth Kane. And thank you, uh, Council, for all of your support. Thank you. That's a very important run to our town for those who participate, for those who help, and for the sponsors. So thank you to everyone. Um, now, moving on, we will go to the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District update, and we have our very own former Mayor Mike, Mike Levitt, here to present. Thank you. My report is not as upbeat as the one we just listened to. Oh, change it then, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. As you know, I just completed 10 years on the city council. Uh, during most of the time, I served on the Orange County Vector Control District. And really briefly, a vector is some sort of an organism that carries diseases and spreads it. Could be an insect, could be an animal. Uh, unfortunately, it's very typically a mosquito. And the diseases that it can spread, well, are phenomenally horrible. Uh, around the world, the vector that is feared the most is a mosquito. Just about nine months ago, Orange County Vector Control District reported a strange and really ominous rise in the number of trapped mosquitoes that were testing positive for West Nile virus. West uh, Orange County Vector Control District has traps all over Seal Beach. And they'll come out occasionally and they will trap mosquitoes and then check them to see if they're positive for the disease. For the first time in history, the number of positive test of mosquitoes has been incredibly high, dangerously high. By the end of mosquito season last year, November 2014, Orange County had achieved the dubious distinction of having more West Nile virus infections than any other county in the country. More infections, more permanent disabilities, and unfortunately, more deaths. In fact, of the 1,820 cases of West Nile in the U.S., 274 cases, or 15%, occurred right here in Orange County. This included seven victims who died and you die a horrible death. You die of meningitis or you die of encephalitis when you die of West Nile. As a Seal Beach City Councilman last year and the city's rep on Orange County Vector Control, I repeatedly warned all of my Seal Beach Leisure World neighbors about rising danger of West Nile. Now, following a really feeble rainy season and some record-breaking heat waves, 2015 is shaping up to be possibly worse than it was last year. We have the power to prevent this from happening ever again. But it is going to require the cooperation and enthusiasm of every one of us here in Seal Beach. We can prevent West Nile from happening if we can prevent the mosquitoes from happening. I'll give you a little, very quickly, very briefly, Mosquito 101. The female mosquito is the only one that bites us, and she does when she's trying to nourish a brood of eggs. The male mosquito, he's happy to go out and sniff the flowers and suck some nectar out of them. It's the female that we have to look out for. And the transmission of West Nile, usually a crow or other bird has a disease. A mosquito bites the infected bird, bites one of us, and then we can get the disease. If a bird is found dead, it possibly from West Nile, Orange County Vector Control District wants to know about it. They can send an inspector out here, and if that bird is positive, then we know that that area around there may have West Nile virus outbreaks. Mosquitoes are very opportunistic. They look for about a quarter of an inch of water. They lay their eggs. If the water remains stagnant for four or five days in a hot summer, you're going to have a new brood of mosquitoes. The way to prevent this, you make sure there's no water standing under your pot of plants, no water in your watering cans. You make sure that the bird fountains 
and the bird bats are all free of water. Otherwise, mosquito looking for a place to lay eggs will find it. If you have a, a rain barrel, you have to be commended for trying to do something about the, dra uh, the drought. Put a window screen over it, secure it with a bungee cord, keep the mosquito out. On a personal level, wear long sleeves, long pant legs at dusk and at dawn. If you can, get some DEET, D-E-E-T, and slather that on before you go outside. Also, mosquitoes are attracted to carbon dioxide. That's the stuff you exhale. So if you've been out running on a 5K and you're breathing hard and it's mosquito season, be careful. Try to, try to do what most of us who are aged, just walk around and just be grateful we can breathe. West Nile is a killer, but it can be prevented. For all of our sakes, let's make sure that we do. Thank you. Mike, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I know when you were on the council, you had reported last year that dengue was here. Where, what's the uh, status on that? Do you know? Uh, right now, this year, dengue is not showing. Okay. Uh, there are hundreds of varieties of mosquitoes transmitting dozens of different diseases. Some are the ones that we hear about that uh, cause bleeding out of all of your ears and your eyes. Uh, West Nile, just so you know very briefly, West Nile, if you get a fever that won't break, if you come out with a rash, uh, if, if you feel really sick but you have absolutely no reason to think you are because none of your friends are transmitting those colds or the flu to you, get your blood checked. Most of the people who get West Nile virus never know about it, but if they go in to, to donate blood, then they find out, oh, yeah, you've got the antibodies. You have been infected. 80% will get infected and never know about it. 20% will be infected and suffer some degree. 1% will get encephalitis and die. Hmm. Okay. I know last year you had said that the dengue mosquito was a day biter and that yes. they were looking to find out about it. So evidently we, we're past that one for now. I'm very proud of you, Ellery. You, no, you've I done your homework. No, I listen to everything you've that. said. Yes. <laughs> Not everything, please. No, not everything that I've said. <laughs> yeah, just be very careful. There is a day biter. Last year in Huntington Beach, the day biters took over all of the swampy area. It's a saltwater mosquito, and it transmits a, it's called a tiger mosquito. It transmits a different disease. We don't worry about that here because the Navy Weapons Station takes care of that problem. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. All right, so now this brings us to oral communications. This is the time that members of the public may address the council regarding any items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the council cannot discuss or take action on any items not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Matters not on the agenda may, at the council's discretion, be referred to the city manager and placed on a future agenda. Those members of the public wishing to speak are asked to come forward to the microphones and state their name for the record. All speakers will be limited to a period of five minutes. Any documents for review should be presented to the city clerk for distribution. Off the talking points, I would just like to remind you that because we cannot talk while you're talking because of the Brown Act and because of agenda items, if you stay around and you listen to council comments, Sometimes some of those things are addressed, but often we look out and everybody's gone. So that's just kind of the way the process works. So if you'd like to uh, come up and speak, please come forward. Anything? Well, anything that... It's in our subject matter. I didn't know if you were going to allow time for the presidents to comment on when you get to No, it's just council items, and it's going to follow okay. right after. Patty Campbell, College Park East. I'd like to address the appointment of the city clerk. If the city clerk decides to leave before the end of a term, that puts the city in a not-so-good position personnel-wise and budget-wise. need a full-time city clerk and not be dependent on election cycles. 
It is important that the city be able to get the best city clerk possible through a competitive hiring process and not take its chances through an open election where the city becomes dependent on whoever shows up. For those two reasons alone, we needed an appointed city clerk, and the voters agreed. Now comes the next step. Who does the city clerk report to? It's a pretty divided issue statewide, and every city has to make the decision on what is best for that city. Per our city charter, council members are not permitted to give direction to staff. They need to go through the city manager, where an issue may well become a budget and a council decision. Now, if council members need documents from the city clerk's office, they need to be able to go directly to the city clerk and not have to go through the city manager. That alone tells me the city clerk should be hired by and report to the city council. We have an unusual city. We are the only city in Orange County that has districts where our council members are directly elected by only the people in that district. Consequently, things can get pretty territorial around here. All the more reason to level the playing field for all five council members when it comes to the city clerk's office. I know, Ellery, you support a hybrid option. Sorry, I don't. I don't think it's the best of both worlds, but rather could be the worst. Please don't have the council do the hiring and firing and then expect someone else to manage that person. The entity who hires and fires and reviews should be managing that person. Otherwise, you could end up with a very contentious situation. It is very difficult to hire someone for someone else to manage. The person could basically say, hey, you can't touch me. The council hired me or the city manager hired me, something like that. We don't need that drama at City Hall. We have enough drama. We don't need that. Okay, so I support the council to hire, fire, manage the city clerk, just as they do the city attorney. The city clerk's office has operated independently in the past, and we were lucky it worked. We had very good city clerks. Have the council hire, manage, and if it comes to that, fire, fire the clerk. See, times have changed, and we have to now do what's best for our city. You, the council members, you're all around City Hall often enough and interact with the city clerk's office often enough to know if she's doing a good job. Thank you. Good evening, Elizabeth Kane, Old Town resident, and I support exactly everything that Patty Campbell just said. I do not agree or believe that a hybrid alternative is a good one after 34 years in corporate America. I have never, after I was hired, an HR lady wished me well in my corporate career at my new job, ever had anything to do with that person again. So the concept that the person you hire has any loyalty back to the council if you did that and passed them to the city manager I don't think holds true. But I agree with what Patty had to say, that I believe that this job needs to remain independent of the city manager reporting to the city council. And I just wanted to share that, and thank you. Good evening, Scott Levitt. First of all, a great 5K, 10K race again this year. Awesome. We have a car show coming up on April 25th, and I just hope personally I can pull off the car show as flawlessly as they do every year for the 5K, 10K. So certainly looking forward to that. Tonight I'm here. I'm representing Taco Surf, a long-established restaurant here in the city of Seal Beach. I sent you all an email sort of to just give you a heads up that I would be here speaking orally. I understand no action can be taken tonight, but I certainly want to implore the importance time-wise of maybe addressing this issue as rapidly as possible. Just to give you a background, Taco Surf started in Seal Beach in 1988 here on Main Street, a locally owned business, and I believe they have five or six locations now. In 1991, they opened up the Sunset Beach location. 
They had a former business partner at that time. They took over an existing restaurant. It's sort of funny, but I can't even remember what that restaurant was. And that was back in 1990. Anyway, that restaurant had an existing CUP that allowed certain amplified music entertainment, of course, under the CUP restrictions. The former business partner in 1991 applied for an expansion of that CUP to allow outdoor dining and to allow extended business hours. During that process, the new CUP was granted under the restrictions. The hours requested were not granted, but outdoor dining was. Unbeknownst to my client, the amplified music element of the CUP went away. They did not know this. For the last, well, since 1991, essentially, they've had amplified music at the restaurant on Friday night and Saturday nights for three hours and on Sundays for three hours. Last year in April, it was brought to their attention. The city, I believe, said that they received a complaint, I assume from a neighbor, about the music. We haven't seen that complaint, so I can't really attest to that. At that time, the city properly reviewed the CUP they had, and they actually said, actually, you don't have a CUP for amplified music. You must cease all amplified music. And my client complied. They have not had any amplified entertainment since April of last year. Unfortunately for them, a large part of their business is drawn by having bands there. As you know, they border Huntington Beach, and all the other restaurants over there have amplified music. Their business is off roughly 20 percent. They came forward in October in front of the Planning Commission. Councilwoman Martha Lovett probably remembers that. And that night, they were granted a CUP to have two non-amplified entertainers at their restaurant, which is technically all they were allowed under the municipal code, which was passed in 2010. They accepted that CUP. There was no other choice. Mr. Basham correctly did read the municipal code, which prohibits any business in the city of Seal Beach now in these zones from having any entertainment amplified, comedians, magicians, or dancing, sort of like that movie Footloose from the 1980s. So that's the way I relate to it anyway, not the terrible version that came out recently. But anyway, so I'm working with Mr. Basham right now to somehow resolve this. The Taco Soup Sunset Beach location is on the verge of closing, and they will be forced to close probably by July or August if we as a whole cannot resolve the matter. And I've done research on this matter. There are some avenues that perhaps the planning department and I will work through over the next few weeks. But without the city council making this a priority, nothing can get done. And I will just end that the planning commission on November 17th or November 14th of last year took a 5-0 vote to make sure that this got to the council agenda immediately on a fast track, at least to address the issue. It's been over four months. It's never appeared on the agenda. I understand there's a lot of holidays and those types of things, but I implore you to make this a priority and to work something out for a temporary fix for my client specifically, and more importantly with a permanent fix of altering the municipal code. Thank you very much. Hi, Paul Yost, Seal Beach. I'm here to talk about the city clerk, and I'd also like to echo what Patty Campbell said. I'm just very, very concerned. You know, people work for the person that evaluates them and pays their bills. That's the person to whom they are responsible. And I guess I would just like to ask those who are thinking about having the city clerk work for the city manager is, what assurances can you give the public who come to the city clerk for a public record act request, something to which they are entitled, involving the city manager, that that information will be accurate and will be true and will be timely? If you set it up such that the city clerk works for the city manager, you end up with a situation in Bell. You have mirrored that particular situation. In the city of Bell, in open court, the city clerk testified, 
that they gave erroneous information to a member of the public because the city manager told them to, and that person was their boss. You know, the, the city clerk is our access. It's our access point to information about the city. And if you're going to have that person work for the city manager, please tell us how you're going to assure the public that that information is accurate and is true. And once again, I do want to thank you for your service because I know it's a thankless job having been there. And uh, that's my comment. So thank you very much. Robert Goldberg, Seal Beach. Um, good evening, Mayor, City Council, and staff. Um, I want to speak also to the city clerk uh, structure and supervision. Um, and I want to tell my own story. Um, Paul mentioned the situation in Bell, and um, we all think of Bell as being an extreme case. But um, I've had a recent experience here that I think is relevant to your decision, especially the, th the three of the council people who would like to have the next city clerk supervised by the city manager. I came before this council uh, at the end of August to uh, express my concerns and outrage about a vacation that the city manager went on with a paid city consultant last August. Um, this room was filled with uh, my friends and neighbors who also expressed similar outrage. Um, during that meeting, uh, there was one member of the public, uh, Brian Kyle, who um, made a statement that uh, my public records request had been costing the city tens of thousands of dollars. Um, he made that statement, um, and at the time, you know, I, you know, he has a right to make whatever statement he wants to. Um, I don't know what I didn't know what where he got that number from. But, you know, that's, that was from him, and, and it, you know, it carried the weight of, of, of his uh, persona and his, 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 you know, his authority. What happened then, though, is that in the following Sun, the Sun, the local paper that was published on Thursday, um, the paper repeated that figure, the tens of thousands of dollars that my public records request had cost, but they didn't attribute it to Mr. Kyle. They attributed it to Vicki Beatley, the city's finance director. And I thought that was strange because uh, Ms. Ms. Beatley did not make that statement, didn't confirm Mr. Kyle's statement at the meeting. And so I, uh, I called uh, Ms. Beatley a few days later, and I asked her, I said, you know, did you, did you make that statement? Because um, the paper gets, sometimes they get things wrong. Uh, Charles works really hard, but, you know, they make mistakes. Um, and she said, yes, she did make that statement to the paper. Um, I asked her, well, was, um, did you make that statement before the meeting or after the meeting? She said after the meeting. And, I, and then I said, well, how did you come up with the figures? And she said that she did a back-of-the-envelope estimate of her time and the city manager's time to review my public records requests over the last couple of years. And uh, so then I asked, well, is there... There's something I can see. Can I see your figures? Is there something I can request to get the documentation? And she said no. Well, thinking about this, um, as I said, Mr. Kyle, you know, he made a statement. He has a right to make a statement. But um, learning that his figures, his, his statement really derived from city staff changes the whole thing. Um, and learning that the way this study was done was to estimate time from uh, treasurer and city manager means that the city manager um, was aware that had authorized, and with her knowledge, um, her staff spent time to do, an, to do some sort of analysis of my uh, public records requests, and then Somehow that information was conveyed to a member of the public so that it could be publicly released at the same time that uh, the city manager was um, under the gun for taking this vacation to Alaska. You have one minute. So in, in essence, um, 
the city manager conspired to adopt a shoot the messenger philosophy, an approach to deflect criticism from her. Um, she used the authority of her of her office to discredit me, to try to discredit me and intimidate me, and, and as well as intimidate other citizens who may want to make public records requests. Are we all now going to have our public records requests cataloged and, and uh, counted? Um, to me, that action disqualifies her to be the supervisor of this office. Um, maybe another another city manager, but not her. Thank you very much. Uh, George Parquet and uh, Old Town Seal Beach. And so I um, have been talking about transparency in city government for how long? A year? I have asked for um, audits of the, wa of the water bill. I asked for audits of the pension. And um, on the same track as Dr. Goldberg was just talking about it. I have information that we are being, we're not getting the truth out of the city manager, maybe also the city council. Um, what I thought is uh, last year it says public records request received September 18th, 2014, because I had been coming to the city council asking for that. And um, then, if you will notice, I got a response from the city clerk's office. After a review of our records, it, it has been determined that the final report you are seeking is not complete and therefore unavailable to be released to the public. Well, look at the back page. And... It was ready on August 1, 2014. It was ready on August 1, 2014. And um, it's my understanding that um, you knew it was being, uh, the audit was being, uh, well, it's not really an audit. It says so in the back of the page. So then I get another email. I am writing with the City of Seal Beach determination in response to your records request via email on October 15th. After review of our records, it has been determined by the City of Seal Beach that the 2014 audit is not complete. That was a lie. It was complete August 1st, 2014, but she had to take her vacation. Don't get this out there until I get back. Well, it, it didn't get out to us until the first of the year. So this supposed to be an audit is not an audit. It's just to verify that you did something about looking at the water bill. And she gave you all these things that she thinks needs to be done. And the conclusion is... They don't want anybody to see it in the public. So are you hiring people to hide things from us? Because we will find them if we have to keep writing letters and talking to people, we will find them. This report is intended solely for the use of the city and is not intended to be and should not be used by anyone other than this specified party. Come on. We're not bail, are we? They had a big conference over at Chapman about transparency in government and contracts. Contracts that are hid from the taxpayers. Are we going down to the city of bail? Because I will call that guy up in Sacramento. I will write him a letter and say, hey, why do we have to accept this? I'm 
mean, he spent all that money, $68,000, having your way to save dear neighbor. You have one minute. One minute. Well, in the meantime, we have a problem on the beach with that dirt. I would like to know if you ever received an EPA Environmental Protection Agency that that dirt is okay. Because if you remember, we used to have a stand castle contest, and somebody used glue to keep the stand together. Now, what happened? We ended up having to pay to have that sand removed. Now, that sand is red. That dirt sand is red, and it's going over to this beach, and it's causing problems over there. Have you noticed it? It's causing problems over there because it can't get down. It won't go down like regular sand. And there's potholes. I walked that beach last weekend. There's potholes on the beach. This is crazy. Time. Good evening, Council. Mike Beebe from Townsville Beach. We don't have to accept that the city clerk is going to be heard and know the supervision of the city manager. We are going to be here for a long time, and we're not going to go away. We want the city clerk to be under the supervision of the city council. When the city council voted 5-0 to have this election, I think part of that agreement, implicit agreement, was that the city council was going to be, was going to supervise the city clerk for all the reasons that Joyce and my friend Barbara and my other good friends have enumerated. The city clerk has to be under the supervision of the city council, not a hybrid, but directly under the supervision of the city council. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to us this evening? All right, seeing none, I close the uh, oral communications. And uh, I would like to ask the city attorney for his report. And Quinn, could you please um, address the Public Records Act um, tonight? Because I think there is a lot of uh, confusion about who orders it, who um, who decides what gets given out and, and just the actual process of applying for it and how long it takes to get it back and what you get back and what's didacted and so forth. Yes, I can. <coughs> if my voice holds out. <laughs> uh, the Public Records Act is, you know, California's one half of its transparency, uh, sunshine ordinance provisions such as the Brown Act. And my firm will be presenting a presentation on the Public Records Act, which we do periodically. And it's going to be coming up within the next month or so. And so I would encourage everyone from Seal Beach to attend that and get perhaps a better understanding of the Public Records Act that I can provide in the next minute or so. <clears throat> and so that's number one. Uh, number two, it is complicated. And what's happened... Um, and this has happened to all my clients. There's been a huge increase in requests practically every day. We used to go five or six years with only, you know, four or five requests a month. And now some of my cities are getting requests um, four or five a day. And so it's becoming a lot more complex. There's a lot more legal review. And so it, it takes longer than it should. And so all the cities are struggling with this. How do we keep transparent? How do we get this information to the public as efficiently as possible? It's just that most of the staff are being overwhelmed right now. And so once again, I encourage the public to come to the presentation. And I know for some of my other clients, and we're looking for it here as well, is coming up with a software program that will make things a lot more organized to be able to handle the sheer volume of PRA requests. And the cost, I know that they, um, when you put in a PRA request, you do pay to receive your documents. Are you under the law? Um, and that changed maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Before you could get staff time, you could recover staff time, 
but the um, <clears throat> state legislature said that's not really fair to the public. And so you're only entitled to the actual cost of copying documents, the actual copying cost. And so the staff time just gets eaten up. And I'm not saying it's not an important function because it is very, very important. It's just that when you get overwhelmed, uh, something has to give. Either you come up with a software program that can organize it to take that bur burden off staff or you hire more people. Okay. Yeah, because I don't think anybody's saying uh, that we don't want to give out the information. I think we're just trying to decide how to keep a lean staff and get it done. So I'm glad to hear that that there's some software applications out there that we're looking at. Yes. Okay. When, when and where is the presentation going to be? We're not sure. We've been picking a date. I thought it was going to be scheduled for next month. Here in. in yes, yeah, so it will be in the council chambers. Um, I think we did it two years ago. And it's always good to get a refresher because there's a constantly evolving um, cases on the subject. Mm -hmm. So it's important for the staff to understand the process. So I think it's going to be this month, but I'm sure it's going to be in the next two months. But it is here, so that's... Yes, yeah, so it'll be right in the council chambers. It's going to be advertised to the public. Good. And I think it's a, it's a good presentation because it, it's become so much more complex than it used to be. Yeah, we all need to be in it together to, to get the information. Okay, uh, city manager report. We have no comments tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Miller? No comments. Councilwoman Mosalabit? No comments. Mayor Pro Tem Sloan? No. Oh, we're going quick. Uh, Councilman uh, Garapapa? Yeah, I just wanted <laughs> to thank the uh, Ron Seal Beach uh, group. Um, Mark and Elizabeth and Mr. Ayers did a wonderful job. I was there Friday night watching them work tirelessly. I was there Saturday morning. Um, all the volunteers, the runners, the city staff, participants, the cheering group like me. It was, I mean, it was great from my point of view. It was flawless. I'm sure you guys had some little hiccups there and there. Um, my neighbor put together a team. My wife was on the team. My daughters were on the team. My other daughter volunteered. We had many out-of-town guests. Everyone had a great, great time. I made it to the baseball game later that evening at McGaw. People were talking about it without me even bringing it up. And I just think it makes everybody proud to be a resident of Seal Beach. And thank you very much. Great job. Um, I have two things this evening that I would like to ask put on a future agenda, please. Um, I would like the staff to take a look at the way our noise ordinance is written and uh, come back with some recommendations so that it can be ma made more easily enforceable. Uh, that's one. And then the other is on the next agenda, I would like to put audit committee appointments uh, we usually make our council appointments in January, but the audit committee isn't done with its work until uh, uh, mid-year, and so now they're getting ready to begin the next audit, and uh, I think it's time to um, maybe give that to someone else for a chance. So if we could put that on the next agenda and address that, I would appreciate it. Um, and as for that, that's all I have tonight. And then we will move on into council items. The city clerk appointment. Do we have a staff report? Yes, Mayor, we do. Hold on just a second. So this is a topic that many people uh, came tonight to discuss. And as you recall, I think it was February 6th, the council was presented with two choices with respect to the city clerk. As you're aware, after the election in November, the position became an appointed position, not an um, elected position. Under state law, the council is the appointing authority unless it adopts an ordinance to delegate that authority to the city manager. Um, in the staff report, there's um, survey data what other cities have done, um, primarily in Orange County, and maybe exclusively in Orange County. And in my experience, the cities are all over the board with respect to does the city council appoint, does the city manager appoint, and there's also hybrids. And so tonight you've got three choices. 
One is if you want to retain the authority in the city council to be the appointing authority of the city clerk, that would be option number one, and all you need to do is direct the city manager to begin the recruiting process. Option number two, if you want to delegate that to the city manager, that authority, the appointing authority, you would direct the city attorney to come back with an ordinance delegating that authority to the city manager. The third option is a hybrid where the city council would retain its power as the appointing authority, and so no ordinance needs to be adopted, but we'd recommend that a resolution come back to have the city manager manage the city clerk on day-to-day operations. There's also other alternatives, but those are the three that are presented to the council pursuant to your direction in February. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's out there. Where do we want to begin? Councilman Miller. I'll begin with what I would recommend again is that we have an independent city clerk, an independent city manager, an independent city attorney, and there will be no supervising of the city clerk. The city clerk will be professional. They will run the department just as the previous city clerk did. We don't supervise individually. We don't supervise the city manager or city attorney, or nor would we do the city clerk. Any of them will only get direction from at least three council people in any direction they get from this body, so they'll all independently operate. So I think I would like to see us have the city clerk be independent. Also, I think this is what the voters thought, that the city clerk would be an independent person. I think most of the voters thought we were just trying to switch from an elected position to an appointed position, and they felt it was going to be appointed by the council. And the city manager is the appointee and the supervisor. I think there's too much. There wouldn't be independence. I think the staff person would have a loyalty to the city manager. And for the hybrid, my issue there is basically my biggest issue there is the conflict with Section 406 of the city charter, which is that the council cannot do anything more than make inquiries of direct reports to the city manager. As I mentioned, I previously had troubles with the city manager where I couldn't get information, wouldn't even get e-mail answers. So I was forced to use the city clerk, and I would want that still to have that same flexibility and independence of the city clerk's department. I'd also want the city clerk's department to have one staff member, as they have for years and years had one staff member there. When the city clerk isn't there, the staff member will carry on with that position. I think most of our city managers, at least in recent years, Linda was on the nine, I don't know what they call it here, but Fridays, every other Friday off. And I think one of the problems we had is that there was nobody to support the city clerk. The city clerk didn't need supervision. Linda did a fine job. She didn't need supervision. She didn't have any assistance at one point. So having nobody to support her, she didn't need supervision. She needed help. And so I would like to just see this be back to being an independent position where it's just like before. The only difference is the council will hire this person. If the person leaves, the council can hire a new person. And that was the idea originally, that we had the exposure that if the city clerk left, we'd have to wait until the next election. That was the number one thing we were trying to solve. And I think we solved it. I just think we're complicating it with these other alternatives. So my recommendation is that we have an independent city clerk, one we appoint, and one that we indirectly supervise and that they're responsible for their position. Only three council people can modify what they're doing. Thank you. That's my input. Anyone else? Yes, Madam Mayor. I think one of the most efficient ways to run this would be to have the city manager hire and supervise the city clerk. There are 15 out of 33 cities that are using this method now, and it seems to be no problem. Also, we have to remember that the city clerk is a department head. So, therefore, would it be appropriate to have the city council supervise the police chief and the finance director? I say no. I think that for efficiency, someone who actually does the evaluations, fills out the evaluations on the person, that they should report to that person. So my recommendation would be to let the city manager hire and supervise the city clerk. And I would like to make that into a motion. Okay. Do we have a second? 
Well, before we go well, on, can we, we get can, everyone's opinion? Uh, okay, the way it works is we'll take the motion, we take the second, and then we have discussion. Okay, oh, so. You didn't give okay. Mr. Miller. A yeah, could I have a motion then, too? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that's how I thought you were just having okay, discussion. Okay, hold on, having... hold on, folks. The way this works is if someone puts a motion on the floor and they get a second, which we don't have yet, then we have discussion. We do not vote until everyone has had their input. Mr. Miller did not ask to put in a motion. Had he, he would have had the same courtesy of being asked for a second. So now I go back to, do we have a second? Yes. Or, uh, okay, so we have a second. Now, all this means is, is now it's time for discussion. May I have a substitute motion, please? Yes, you may. Would you make it, please? My motion is we have an independent city clerk, one we appoint, and one that uh, operates independently. Okay. Do, does he have a second? I second it. All right. I have a problem, Tina. What is my, um, Tina, what does my light say on the front? Nothing? Okay. Well, my button is stuck on yes up here. <laughs> We thank you. So <laughs> in advance, yeah. So I'm not quite sure. I, I'm not. I, it's stuck altogether. I can't push it. Okay. You just take a voice call. So, yeah, well, let's do a voice call on it, okay? Well, when do we right. discuss it? Okay. Um, now I need to go to the attorney. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so now do I take discussion, or do we have to vote on the yeah. substitute motion first? We discuss first. You can discuss the substitute motion, but you have to take a vote on the substitute motion first. Okay, so but then now. are we discussing the substitute motion yes. or everything? You, the substitute motion, but you can be why you oppose it. So it's okay. pretty much everything. Does right. it need a second? He, uh, he got it. Has a second. Oh, okay. All right. Discussion? I, you know, I just want to say I agree with Mr. Miller. I think it's an independent um, position. I think that's what the voters were expecting when they voted for this. I think we should keep it at that. Um, that's what we voted for at the time. Uh, there's no reason to change this, and there's no issue at the time for, for it to go to the city managers, so we should just try this out. Um, I think the city council should appoint an oversight um, have oversight authority on this position. Okay. Anyone else? I, I disagree with the substitute motion. I um, am in favor of the motion I seconded. Having s daily supervision is different than having city council supervision. We're off doing our whatever we do when we're not here, which is more times we're not here than we are here. And the day-to-day -day operation of the city clerk's office is instrumental in having a well-run community, well-run city government. That person who is running the city clerk's office needs to be supervised um, more than periodically by the city council. And who on the city council is going to take the lead on um, supervising the city clerk? Okay, we all have one-fifth of the supervision of this person. Who do they listen to if we come into conflict? Who, I mean, we need something done today, right now, this hour. And... Every city uh, council person either has a different idea or there isn't a majority. How, what the heck do they do? Are they, do they go off on their own and do what they think is right? Do they do what I think is right? Do they do what you think is right? So, no, I think that the supervision of the city clerk needs to be with the city manager. They're there every day. They work closely together. They're instrumental in the movement of this community. And I could, cannot support your substitute motion. Okay. I'm going to weigh in for just a minute, if I may, Gary. Um, Gary, you have made it akin to the um, city attorney. And I think what makes the city attorney work 
being supervised by three people. A head of three I don't think ever works. But what makes the city attorney work is the attorney-client privilege and the fact that you have the ability to talk to him and he guards that with attorney-client privilege. The clerk would not have that. I think any time that you take three people, a decision of three people, to make a decision on direction is very poor management. As far as Bell, I mean, we can discuss Bell until the cows come home. The Bell city clerk was actually an elected city clerk that moved, and a crooked city council with a crooked city manager appointed an accounting clerk and said, you're now city clerk. So in any way to bring Bell into this is completely off the mark. As far as public records go, the city clerk is driven by law, and that's what makes her or him independent. As far as Section 406 goes, it is my understanding that our attorney has given clear direction that any of us at any time as one person may go and get any documents we want with or without the city manager's permission. Am I correct, Quinn? Yes. So as far as the people thought they were voting, I don't know what people these are, because I was very clear during the election that I was for an appointed clerk, and I was very clear all through the election that it would be managed by the city attorney. I never, I mean, I'm sorry, city manager. I certainly never led anyone down any path other than that. So with all of these things in line, I would not support the substitute motion. Now, Mr. Miller. To me, this is no different than the city manager. No one council person can tell the city manager what to do. We'll have a professional city clerk, one that is responsible for the job. If they don't do the job, they'll be gone. And it'll take three people to tell them to do something different than what their job specifications say they're supposed to do. With regard to 406. May I just address that? Because we meet here every two weeks, and that's when we give the city manager direction. The city clerk's office is a different day-to-day operation. It's not a management of everything and so forth. It's something that has to be done every day. Both jobs are something that has to be done every day. But not under direction. And we really didn't have a problem with the previous city clerk and the way the organization worked and the previous city clerk before that. The only thing we changed is how we arrive at a city clerk. With regard to 406, Quinn, it's an inquiry. It doesn't say you can go and get documents. It says you can make an inquiry. You can ask questions and get answers. I can't go to Sean and say I want a letter out of you or I want this or I want that, as an example. I can make inquiries of Sean. Do you have that letter? If I want it, he may give it to me just because I've asked because he knows I'll go to the city manager and ask for it. But it's just an inquiry. All you can do is inquire. You cannot interfere. You cannot give them work assignments. Work assignments as in give me a document. So I would disagree on the interpretation of 406. Again, I'm back to the I see the city clerk is no different than the city manager. They're two of the same professional type of people, and I expect them to run their organizations. And it's worked in the past that way. The only thing we were really changing was how we arrived at a city clerk. Everybody was always concerned that if Linda were to leave or something, we wouldn't have any ability to have a city clerk. We'd have to have a special election. And that was what we were originally trying to solve. Well, it sounds like each of us had our own reasons then. So any other discussion? I'd like to make another comment. Yes. David Sloan and I spent our professional careers in the public sector, and we've worked in communities, cities that have had all varieties of city clerk setups. Some were appointed by the council and fired by the council and all the way up to what we're talking about. I've seen it work, how it works in every city. I've been in nearly 30 cities as a consultant. I go in there, and as a 
kind of new eyes, see how things are done. And I can tell when there's a good city clerk in a community or not. And I can tell before anyone tells me how the setup is, who has supervision over what. And it's so obvious that um, when the city clerk has almost complete autonomy, the best way to do it is the one I support because I've experienced it. I'm not coming in off the street. Um, not knowing what goes on to run a community like this one or any other. Uh, having the city clerk answer to the city manager is probably the most efficient and best way to get good people and keep them. And I have one final comment that I would like to make, and that is I proposed a hybrid. I would be open to a number of hybrids. I listened tonight to the fact that people don't think a hybrid is a good idea, so I am willing to abandon that idea. I never think it's a good idea to have it all one way or all another way. I find it very divisive. I would rather we'd be able to come together and figure out how to work it so we get some of the best of each, but... Um, I've been convinced tonight that that's not what the community wants. So uh, with that, if there are no more comments, I'll call for the vote on the substitute motion. And we need to do this orally because my button's stuck. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, all in favor of the substitute motion. Which is the independent clerk. I don't like the name of that, so I'm not going to call it that. Option number one on page two of your staff report. That the council will reserve the authority to appoint and oversee the operations of a permanent city clerk. Okay, that is the substitute motion. Please vote. All those in favor of the substitute motion. Could you explain that again, Quinn? <laughs> in, in English? It's some, <laughs> yes, the city council would retain its authority to be the appointing authority of the city clerk and would be the city clerk would report to the city council. Thank you. Please vote out loud. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 Okay, so the substitute motion fails. We are left with the other motion. Um, before we vote on that, I will make a substitute motion to see if there is any interest in a hybrid model. Wait, um, I think it's over. Oh, no. It's not. No? We're back to the second of well, the original motion, which is option number two. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellie. Okay. So I just one more time, I want to see if we can come together to um, uh, make it where we can work this out together in, a, in a, another way. And that would be, and I would change my hybrid just a little bit, where I would make it where the city council plus the city manager would be the hiring, and then the city manager would be the day-to-day -day supervisor. Um, is there any interest in this? Please tell me by seconding it, and if not, then we'll move on. Can I ask a question? Was my substitute motion, did I not get three yeses? No, you got three no's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, you repeat your hybrid, please? Yes, okay. Having listened to what everyone says on the – and, and what this is is about the philosophy of running an efficient organization, that people who report – the people who hire someone have loyal people who uh, work for them, okay? Um, so if the city council as a body – plus the city manager, which actually I think it was Pico Rivera, I'm not quite sure, that I talked to. Uh, this is their method, this is theirs, and this is how I got this. So the city council plus the city manager did the hiring together as a unit, and then the city manager is the one who manages the day-to-day -day organization. Is there any uh, interest in exploring. Well, Mayor, there is one other option, too, that Los Alamitos uses, and that's kind of the opposite of what you're saying. It's the city council does the appointments, and the city manager and the city council does the oversight authority. Well, that, is that, would be my, another option. that is not my substitute. That would be another option. That is not my substitute motion, no. Well, that's another hybrid, though, that we can 
discuss. Is that a substitute motion? Well, I made a substitute motion. I'm waiting to see if I have a second. I have a comment on your substitute motion. Wait, wait. Do I have a second? If I have no second, then you may make your substitute motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Seeing none, go ahead and make yours. Okay. I make a motion to second to adopt the resolution which reserves authority. The council reserves authority to appoint. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I think we already did that. A permanent city clerk will at the same time have oversight by both the city council and the city manager. How would that work, Mike? Okay. Wait. Do we have a second? Well, I have to understand it before I can second it. No. You have to second it and then you get an understanding. This doesn't have to pass. I'll second it. Okay. Second it for discussion. How does it work? Well, I mean, I'm just reading what's in here. Los Alamitos does the same thing. I think that we would do the hiring and then jointly we would all be an oversight authority for the city clerk. It's a hybrid of reverse order from what Mayor Deaton is requesting. It's almost a hybrid like ours. Only it's reverse. Yeah. It is reverse. If I have it right, we're hiring the city clerk and then we together are managing the jointly. Jointly. Which means the city manager will pretty much manage them. But it is kind of a compromise, I think. Okay. I like Mike's recommendation. I second that a second time. Okay. So then what we need to do is vote on that substitute motion. All those in favor of that substitute motion, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. No. Okay. So any other substitute motions before we go back to the original? The reality of that was probably your hybrid because the reality is that Jill would supervise the day-to-day situation. So I think I gave the same version you had just a little differently. Maybe. But if you remember, my hybrid had the city council and the city clerk. That was. Do you want to amend your proposal, Mike? I don't know how many times I can say it or how many different ways, but I think we already voted on my motion. All right. Let's go ahead then and call for the original motion. Yes. The original motion is option number two, which would be direct the city attorney to prepare an ordinance delegating the appointing authority and oversight to the city manager. That's not option two. That's option two. That is option two. We've jumped from one to three to four and five. Page two. I'm just looking at page two of the staff report. All right. And that has been motioned and seconded. So now we can have discussion on it. And I once again want to say that I would have rather that we could have worked out a hybrid, but since we did not, I am going to vote in favor of this motion. And what was that motion? That one is that the city manager will hire and supervise. Okay. So please vote. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. And all those opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Or no? No. So two no's and three ayes. So this will come back for a future agenda, the draft ordinance for first and second reading. Okay. So let's move on then to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to accept the consent calendar? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Did you second it, Karen? Yes, I did. Okay. We have to vote orally. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Let the record show five in favor. There are no items removed from the consent calendar. There is no public hearing. There is no unfinished continued business. There is no new business. Therefore, I adjourn to April 13th, 2015 at 6 o'clock to meet in closed session if deemed necessary. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for your participation. Thank you.